Turn with me to 1 Timothy 4. I'll take, um, I'll touch on witchcraft today. But as I prayed about this, this morning, the Lord began to reveal to me, when I say the word witchcraft, most Christians turn their ear off, or they, they like it because it's catchy to their soul, but they turn their spiritual ear off because they immediately say, uh, Preacher, I'm born again. I don't dabble in witchcraft. But as I begin to define, and out of a revelation insight, uh, give you information on witchcraft, you'll realize that we touch witchcraft more than we think, even as believers. Uh, so on Wednesday night, I'll, I'll deal with, I might touch a little bit here today, but I'll deal with it uh, more so on Wednesday night. And just to, to, to whet your appetite a little bit, uh, uh, the spirit, a, a witchcraft spirit is a controlling spirit. A witchcraft spirit is a controlling spirit. And I'll deal with that in, in, in detail on Wednesday night. Uh, a lot of people coming from a, my mother is 100% Italian on her side. Uh, Italian people like witchcraft because they're extremely controlling, manipulating people by nature, but it's not by nature, it's by spirit. Come on, can you say amen? And it's not on purpose most of the time. It's by help of a demon. Uh, so we'll exhaust that if you'll be here Wednesday night and, and we'll help you with that. Today I want to get back on uh, seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. De devils. Uh, 1 Timothy 4, starting in uh, the first verse, says, Now the Spirit uh, speaketh expressly that in latter times some shall depart from faith. Say, not me. Uh, uh, some shall depart from faith. Uh, and giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Let's go back to the first verse there. The Spirit speaketh expressly. Uh, that word e expressly uh, in the Greek is retos, which means uh, manifestly or of great importance or urgency. Uh, so the Holy Spirit began 2,000 years ago, give or take uh, uh, you know, a few years, that, that this is important. And any time you deal with a man or a, or a woman or a person's soul is extremely important because your soul lives for eternity. Your soul goes on from this life to either heaven or hell. Uh, but your soul will never die. And you're going to have a body in heaven, and you're going to have a body in hell, and your body in heaven, will be, it, it'll be delightful. Your body in hell will be tormented. The flesh of your body will be under torment every day of your life. If you're not saved and you're in this service, at some point in time I would run to the altar of God and I would escape God's judgment and I would escape hell for eternity because hell, my friend, is real and it's a very horrible place. Are you here Say amen. So uh, we see here that the Spirit was dealing with our soul. Well, if He's dealing with our soul, uh, He's contending for our soul in, in bringing this information. Well, if He's contending for it, then someone else must be contending for it as well. Amen? And, and that's Satan. But we see uh, Satan's whole plan, or entire plan uh, of getting us or trying to take us away is spelled out here right for us. He said, some shall depart from faith in the tool or the weapon of the enemy, number one, is a seducing spirit. It takes a seducing spirit first before he begins to spew his doctrine. You'll always face the seducing spirit or a seductive spirit first before they begin to twist the truth or before they begin to manipulate uh, uh, the doctrine of the Bible. Now understand this, Satan's manipulation of the word when we get to doctrines of devils is not far off, but enough off, come on, to drive you away from the truth. See, like when you, when you hear there's a Satanic Bible, Bible Satan didn't write that. Uh, uh, Satan's smarter than someone who'd write a Bible uh, to cause you to be uh, completely and totally out of your mind, evil and destructive. Even though that's who Satan is, that's his personality, uh, that, that's his characteristics. However, uh, Satan, uh, the Bible says, he lies in wait or, or he's patient and wise at his craft. Are you still here? So uh, the Bible first says, uh, uh, seducing spirits. We went through this a little bit last week. I'm not going to take too much time, but... Uh, in seduction, 
or, or, or by way of seduction, no matter how you're being seduced, uh, the appeal is always uh, to your emotions and your feelings. Uh, any kind of seduction always deals with uh, your feelings. So when we say your feelings, that would be your, your mind, your will, your emotion, you know, the, uh, your, your flavors, your touch, what you see, uh, what you like when you see, what you hear, uh, all those opinions, personalities of a human being that make you an individual. Uh, so if he's going to seduce you, he's not going to seduce your spirit. He knows your spirit belongs to God. He's going to seduce uh, back to your soul and, and, and try to derive or dig up a place and a time. Come on, I'll just lay this out for you. Uh, a place and a time in your past that may have brought you a natural joy, but as you got born again, that shouldn't be joyful to you anymore. But he'll begin to paint a picture that that was such a great feeling. That's the operation of seduction. And he'll bring you away or pull you away uh, uh, from the truth uh, little by little with a seducing spirit painting a picture to you that this fruit is sweeter than the table you're eating from now. Or, or this time is better or what he's offering is going to bring you more joy. It's going to bring you more peace. But he's a liar and the father of every lie. Come on now, say amen. The things of God are sweeter than anything that Satan ever has. Everything Satan has has become bitter. Amen? And it takes seduction uh, for him to produce a, a bitter fruit and, and him to try to, uh, to, to uh, manipulate you that his fruit, it'd be, it'd be this is how Satan does. It, remember my story about Florida sour oranges? Well, only a few, so I got to tell it again. All right. I don't know the origin of a sour orange. I, I don't know. I, all I know is old Florida, old timer Florida people would make uh, pies out of them, almost like a key lime pie or, uh, you know, uh, desserts out of them, but took a lot of sugar to cut the bitter. Come on, are you here? Can you say amen? Uh, but usually a, a Florida orange or a, a bitter orange, it, it, can, it grows in the forest and it contends with higher trees, so it grows real high, so you've got to work to get the fruit. And I remember as a young man, uh, I was hunting uh, somewhere in the uh, middle of our state, just south of here, uh, rather, and... Uh, we were hog hunting, it was summertime, and it was hot. And, and as we're going through the woods, I remember seeing these beautiful oranges. And I was like, oh man, I'm hot, I'm thirsty, I'm sweaty. And, and now when you hunt 30 years plus ago, you didn't have the backpack with the water straw. <laughs> like you guys look now going to the woods like G.I. Joe, man, you're ready for everything. <laughs> I had a pair of shorts on, no shirt, no shoes, and a rifle, and that was it. And we went hunting, can you say amen? Uh, but we got to that tree, and I said, I'm going to climb the tree. We got up and climbed the tree, and then we peeled uh, the, the orange, and I was just so ready. It peeled so easy. I mean, just like, almost, you know, some, some tangerines peel it, but this one was just like, as soon as you start, just went, Phew. I said, oh, this is going to be wonderful. And I put it in my mouth, and it was the most bitter. It dried my mouth. Smacked my mouth a few times. <laughs> left the most god-awful taste in my mouth uh, that I, come on, are you here, that I've ever had. And I spit it out. I said, what in the world? Well, then we come to find out they're Florida sour orange trees. Fast forward about, I don't know, seven years ago, we had a group from Dr. Rodney's here with us uh, uh, doing a soul uh, winning outreach. And, and I knew there was a few sour orange trees in the Bunnell area. So we were handing out flyers, and, and one of the boys that were with me, I said, Are, do you like oranges? Oh, yeah, I grew up on the West Coast where there's orange you know, groves, and I, I love good orange. I said, I got the best orange tree there is in Florida, <laughs> right here in Bunnell. They peel easy, they look good, they taste wonderful. He goes, oh, let's go get one. I said, the problem is it grew a little high, so you've got to climb up there and get them. So he gets up there. Come on, a year. Gets the, gets the, and I, I've already prepped everybody else that this was a, so he peels it, he puts it in his mouth, and he's, oh, man, that's good. I'm sitting there thinking, you kidding me? <laughs> so I said, Stephen, that's not bitter? And he goes, yeah, it's real bitter. I said, well, spit it out. I'm playing a joke on you. He goes, man, I can't feel my mouth. It's like numb, and my mouth is dry, and, and it feels like someone smacked me in the mouth. What is this thing? 
Well, it's a Florida, sour Florida. Well, Satan has to take that, that sour, bitter fruit and somehow dress it up and present it to you as a sweet morsel or a, a tasty thing because everything that he possesses spoils or is bitter. Can you say amen? So this takes great, destruct, great seduction and, and, and manipulation. And Satan is the master at those two crafts. He knows how to seduce away from. The word seduce means uh, to pull you away, take away from. Come on. Uh, he knows how to uh, seduce you away from and seduce you to or, or tie you to something else. Take you away from God and tie you to something else. Uh, another name for Satan is that he's the Antichrist. Uh, the, the word, or he is Antichrist. The, the word Christ means uh, uh, the anointed one. So Satan, is the, he's after the anointing, and he's anti-anointing, anti-good, anti-God, anti-Jesus, anti-free. Come on, are you here? Uh, John 10.10 10 said that he's come to steal, kill, and destroy, but God's come to give you life, and life more abundantly. Can someone say amen? Uh, so in this, in this uh, seduction, and I've seen it through the years, it, it, it's always, it always deals with an emotion. And as non-believers were led purely by emotions and feelings, which emotions are part of our feelings. I, I should say emotions and sense realm. As believers, we should be emotionally stable. And we shouldn't have to look for a time or a thing that does not exist to bring us a, a euphoric type of freedom. Come on, can you say amen? We have the presence of God. We have the person of the Almighty. Uh, we have the blood of Jesus that not only has cleansed us, but that runs within us, yeah. that surges within us, yeah. that gives us strength for day to day. Can you say amen? We have the anointing of God, which is like a fire, the Bible said. Uh, the anointing will come on you like fire, and it's in you like a fire. It's in you like a burning flame. And anytime there's something ungodly, this fire gobbles it up, and it quenches and eats it up, and spits out the ashes and these ungodly things are no more uh, but a lot of times for some reason uh, the church I believe uh, due to their lack of chasing God resort back to emotional lifestyles let's go through a, a few scenarios oh if I could just go back to high school Like someone said, what would you do, what would you do to be uh, 18 again? I said, I'd do anything not to be 18 again. <laughs> I, I'm so happy at 50. I got more money I've ever had. I'm healthier than I've ever been. I got more muscles than I've ever had. I got a beautiful wife. I don't have to go out and date and do all those crazy things I used to have to do. Come on, can you say, I got three beautiful baby boys. I got a little grandbaby. Why would I want to leave all that and go back? The, come on, yeah. Class. The only reason is Satan tapping into my emotions, bringing me back to a place that I've already left and I have no business revisiting. The only business you have in the past it is to glorify God as either a testimony or, or thankfulness of what he's done and where you're at because of it. Can you say amen to that? Go with me to Ephesians 2. Am I helping somebody? You, you got to guard, and I'll get into it, I'll give you a few points in a moment, but you've got to guard your, your thought life. You've got to guard, uh, you know, you can speak uh, into your emotions uh, to be a certain way, and you'll, you'll steer yourself into godliness, into godly emotions, into God. Come on. Uh, when I deal with people who are emotionally a wreck, they think I'm insensitive. That's what, that's what they tell me. Well, well you're, 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 just, you're not sensitive, and, and you're not kind, and you're not caring, and you're not loving. No, no. No, no. Let, let me help you. You've been deceived. You've been seduced. You're living in seduction. You want me to get down on your level and go to where you are uh, by way of Satan's trickery. I'm not going to do it. 
I'm not going to feel bad for you. Me feeling bad for you doesn't help you at all. He, listen, when, when you're seduced, you need someone strong to pull you out of the pit of seduction. You, you don't need somebody else in the pit. Come on. Uh, you need someone to throw a rope down and say, hey, uh, I don't need to hear why you're there. I don't need to hear how you got there. I don't need to hear how it feels down there. I don't need to hear why you deserve to be there, why you don't. Grab the rope, shut up. I'm pulling you out. I'll clean you off when we get up here, and we'll figure it out together. But you're coming out of the pit. And you pull them out of that pit, can you say amen? But a lot of people, want to, they'll, they'll say things why can't you be more kind and compassionate and loving and caring? I'm trying to cast a devil out of you. How much more compassionate, loving, and caring does it get that I'm trying to rip this personality out of you that's grown into you and present you a free man to God and I don't care? I just go home and watch TV. That would be not caring. Come on, can you say amen? But showing up is caring. Are you still with me? Ephesians 2, preach them pretty good, if I may say myself. Amen. Ephesians 2, verse 1 uh, says, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses, where in times past you walked accordingly, or according to the course of this world, According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit, now, now circle that, that's not talking about the Holy Spirit or heavenly spirit, uh, the, the spirit that now worketh in children of disobedience. All right, we were once, but we are no more. And I don't know about you, but you better protect yourself from regression. We don't regret. Uh, the moment you begin to digress, and, and go backwards, you're on your way to demonic possession. Because Satan's trying to get you to a place where you're, you're singled out and you're vulnerable. And, and then you're empty and you say, well, I'll just take anything. And remember this, he appears as an angel of light. Even though he's not any longer, he appears that way. And most people in ignorance or in, or in desperation will say, oh, that, oh, okay, I'll take you. It's almost like there's this, oh, I might have to get off the altar for this one. <laughs> there's this little TikTok video, and, and there's this woman that has no teeth. It, have you seen it? <laughs> no uppers, no bottoms, and she might be like 20s, maybe early 30s. And, and so she turns around, she looks at you, and I'm not picking on the woman, I'm not picking if you don't have teeth, that's not, not a problem. But when she turns around, she looks like the, the witch from Snow White at Disney World. The little witch up there is like, oh, God, without teeth. And, and, and so she, she goes and she'll show another little clip and she'll put her teeth in. She'll put me. When she gets done, she looks like Miss America. Yeah. Like I tell my wife, I said, look at this. Look at this. <laughs> Deception at its finest. You think you're getting one thing. Come on. Could you imagine? <laughs> yes, I love you. Yes, I'll marry you. Uh, you. You get home. She goes in the bathroom. Takes her makeup off. What did I do? That's not Boaz. But that's a perfect image of Satan. Do well, you think Satan's going to show up to you and say, Hey, I am, I am Satan. I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to separate you from your family. I'm going to kill your children. He doesn't come to you because you would never take the deal. You remember I gave you the different names. Let me get through this. Oh, come on. I'll preach. That's all right. We'll get there. Amen. Remember the word devil actually means an actual person, but it means a slanderer both of God and man. And the next definition is to speak the truth for evil intent. And the purpose is always destruction. The word to, to slander is to speak the truth for evil uh, for reasons. So it would be like this. I shared this last week, but I'm going to go into the Garden of Eden in a minute. It'd be like, let's say, a Bella comes to me as a man of God, as a, a person of God in her life, and she says, I have a secret, but you can't tell anybody. I'm trusting you. I, I, I need help, spiritual help with this. And she tells me something that's so uh, deep down secret that no one knows. And, and, and her trusting me 
uh, puts her in a very vulnerable place because if I spill the beans, it could defame her, deface her. Uh, it, it could really hurt her, who she is. So she tells me, and then I go over to brother so-and-so, and, and I begin to spew the secret. Well, if I tell the exact secret that she told, is it truth? 100% it's true. But uh, am I using it uh, for godly purposes or for evil gain? Evil gain. All right, uh, it'd be like this. Satan in the garden said to Eve, here, I'm presenting you this beautiful fruit. If you eat this fruit, uh, you'll know all the things of God. Well, we know this, and we've even put together and preached and taught that we can even uh, liken the tree of knowledge, good and evil, uh, the, the beginning of tithe, come on, because it was a little part of the garden, but God established that this belongs to me and it's off limits to you. And we know in Malachi 3, uh, because they refused to tithe and offer, they cursed themselves with a curse. So Adam presents this fruit to be something it wasn't. Come on, are you here? She says, I cannot eat it because if I eat it, I will surely die. Now, Satan immediately uh, begins to prey on ignorance. He says, you shall not surely die. Was he lying? Yes and no. Adam lived some 900 years after he ate the fruit. So he didn't surely die at that point, but they died a spiritual death. They, they died and were separated from the promise of God. And immediately there came the same curse that we hear about in Malachi 3. The same curse came upon them for touching something that did not belong to them. Deception. Seducing spirits. Doctrines of devils. Uh, they were cast out. Uh, they, they no longer fellowship with God at that point. Uh, they had to uh, toil or work their fingers to the bone. Uh, immediately Eve had to have pain in childbearing. Uh, these are all curses, come on, are you still here, uh, that God never intended for man uh, to have. Turn with me to Galatians uh, 3. Am I still helping somebody? Amen. Now, uh, after the point of seduction, Satan will then bring you into uh, the realm of ungodly or evil doctrine. Now remember, some shall depart from faith, some, not me, not us, some shall depart from faith. How in the world, how many are like rooted and grounded in your faith? You just, you feel that way. You say, I'm rooted, grounded in my faith. Could you imagine Satan getting you to revert back to the person you were before you met Jesus Christ? But it happens. I could, I could read a list in the last 15 years of people who have walked through those doors and said yes to Jesus, prayed here at the altar in their natural tongue, prayed in, got filled with the Holy Ghost, prayed in other tongues, uh, got baptized in water, tithed, offered, ministered, who, are, who have departed the faith. And every single story uh, goes like this, because I check up on everybody, Billy. I don't just feed you to the wolves. If you want the wolves to eat you, you're going to have to work for it. But I'm going to fight for you. So I check up on everybody, and it always starts like this. Oh, yeah, uh, they went to this disgruntled group of believers, and they had the same thing in common. They were both hurt by a preacher like you. And they started talking. Well, they didn't talk at first. They were led away. Well, how were they led away? Uh, they were led away by a seducing spirit. And then when Satan got them, he began to teach them a different doctrine. Now, now there's not a Bible. Uh, men have derived a Bible, evil men, and they call it the Satanic Bible. But this is, this is how uh, Satan works. Whatever is true, whatever is godly, uh, his doctrine's opposite. Remember this, the, the Holy Spirit, according to John 16, 13, 14, 16, 13, the Holy Spirit uh, leads you and guides you into all truths, the entire Bible. 
Uh, anything that's leading you away or against the truth is demonic in its doctrines of devils. It's anti-God. Come on, uh, doctrine just means set of beliefs. Uh, it means a, a learned thing or a set of beliefs. Well, uh, Satan's got to pull you away. The, the, another Bible word, great Bible word, is sift you. Now, the Bible says Satan has come to sift you. Uh, some can be sifted, some cannot be sifted. I don't know about you, but if you get real fat in the, in the faith, uh, you're too big to go through the holes. Can you say amen? amen? I'm not falling through the crack. I cannot be sifted. I will not be sifted. Hey, I live like this outside of the pulpit. And you better start figuring out how to as well. If not, you might be one of the ones that gets sifted or pulled away and brainwashed by Satan with an incorrect or ungodly doctrine or set of beliefs. Uh, but I, I just choose to live this way. I'm not getting sifted. You're not sifting me. You're not taking me. God's been too good to me, and you're not taking me away from God. Can you say amen? amen. So, so we go um, to Galatians 3, uh, 1 through 3. So he'll pull you away, and then he'll begin to uh, deal, deal with the truths or the mistruths. And he'll begin to whisper uh, in your ear that, that the preacher and the leadership and faith and the Bible is all about manipulation. It's all about control. And it's all about hurting. And it's all about uh, taking away from you. How evil does that sound? And I guess some churches might be uh, guilty as charged. Uh, but if you're a God church, you should be conveying life. You should be conveying hope. You should be conveying truth. Uh, now there is cor correction in love. I tell people this, uh, uh, that uh, one of the highest forms of love is correction. That's not evil, that's not ungodly. But we should be conveying these uh, truths with our entire being, our entire lifestyle. Amen. Galatians 3, 1 through 3. Uh, are you there? It says, Galatians 3, 1 through 3. Oh, foolish Galatians, church, this is a church now, Circle Right Church, Galatians Church. Uh, uh, oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes uh, Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you? This only would I learn of you, receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, and you now have made perfect, or you are made perfect by the flesh? Wow. A church. We, we could go through Paul dealing with the church in Ephesus. Uh, he, he says uh, that uh, you've got to quit lying. Could you imagine uh, that, that the church of the Almighty should be the standard to the universe, but yet Satan is sifting the church, uh, Satan is, is bewitching or, or witchcrafting the church out of the truth, out of what they know, and bringing them uh, into a lie. Are you still here? Can you say amen? amen. Now, I want to go over here. If you're a note taker, get ready to take notes. Uh, I want to give you some, uh, probably give me, give, give me uh, let me give you four points of demonic entry. Ways uh, Satan gains entry into your life, all right? I'm going to give you four points. Ways Satan gains entry in, in your life. Uh, number one, the number one way Satan gains entry uh, into your life is through ignorance. Everybody say ignorance. ignorance. The Bible says, if you know the truth, the truth will... If you don't know the truth, then the opposite of that scripture would be very simple. Uh, uh, in ignorance, I am in bondage. In truth, I am in freedom. In ignorance, I'm a bond man, bond woman. In freedom, or, or in truth, I walk in freedom. I walk in the knowledge of God. I, I walk in divine freedom. Are you still here? 1 Peter 5.8 uh, talks about, let, let's just put our eyes on a few of these scriptures, uh, if you will. Uh, go to 1 Peter uh, 5.8. I'm going to try to go through my phone because i got a lot of them here. Uh, 1 Peter 5.8. Say amen or something. Amen. 1 Peter 5.8. 
says. You ready? You there? Be sober, well balanced. I'm, I'm reading this out of the Amplified. Be sober. Now this doesn't only mean, you're, we're not talking about drunk sober. We're talking about being spiritual, have a spiritual mindset. Don't be out of lunch spiritually. Uh, don't be uh, living a, a confused spiritual life. Like you should know right from wrong. And, and we shouldn't have to bring judgment to you for you to know right from wrong. Uh, the Bible says that the ways of God should be delightful to you, or, or, or His commandments, actually, it says, should not be burdensome. Like, it shouldn't be a, a hassle for you to come to church. Hey, if you tie to God of all, how many hours are in a day? What's a tithe of 24? Two hours and 40 minutes belong to God every day. Wow. Come on, we got to go there. And that should not be burdensome to you. Woo, okay. So be sober or sober up. Because if you're fighting against what God's deemed to be righteous and true, you're in that seductive state. Well, let me say that over here. Maybe you'll be holy and help me. If you're fighting and reasoning why it's okay for you to not come to church, you're in the middle of seduction. Like, uh, oh, Lord, help me. Hold on. Let me help you prepare for church. You want to write something down? We're just family, it's all right. Preparation and reflection maximize every experience. Preparation and reflection maximize every experience. It's a quote by John Maxwell. The opposite of that would be, that, that means... Friday, expectation. Church comes Sunday. Church is coming Sunday. I might get a new spouse on Sunday. They might call me up to the altar and, 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 and prophesy over me on Sunday under the, the power of the Almighty, and that might start a reaction, a holy reaction, to where I'm going to receive the thing I've been believing for. Then we got to go to reflection, which happens after. I had holy hands laid on me. I had a person of God uh, speak over me that there's a Boaz on my way. I had a person of God speak over me that God's got somebody just for me that was created for me and all my quirks and everything else that they're coming for me. That's reflecting. So now you're maximizing the experience. But if you are caught up in, well, maybe we'll go to the next Sunday because I, we went last Sunday and it is summer, so no one would really expect us to go to church during the summer on Sunday. I mean, the sun's out. <laughs> Seduced. Seduced. Now don't get, don't leave here and get mad and say, "Oh, the, the, he, he's judgmental." No, I'm a truth bearer. I, I'm just helping, trying to set up a guard against Satan. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be anywhere else in the world on a Sunday morning or a Wednesday night in the, than the household of my God. You take all my possessions. You take everything in this world for me, but leave me to God. Let me come to the house of worship. I don't care about businesses. I don't care about money. I, come on now, I'll preach. I don't care about relations. I don't care about anything else. Sunday and Wednesday, I've designated to my God. Don't mess with me in the morning, my prayer time. Don't mess with me in the morning, my study time. That's God's, that's holy time. That's God's time. And I'm not going to be seduced away from it. I'm not going to be talked into there's something better or sweeter than time spent with my God. Can you say amen? I'm going to give it all to my God. I come to the household of faith. Can you say amen to this? So we got 1 Peter 5, 8. Let me read it again. 
I know I'm getting a little preachy and punchy, but that's all right. Be sober, well balanced. Well, you shouldn't be drunk anyway, but let's know what it's talking about. So if you're drunk, get sober. Uh, well balanced, self discipline. Uh oh. You better circle that because that's going to play a big part into this next part of my teaching. Uh, be self disciplined. Be alert and cautious at all times. Now, this has nothing, this does, says fear nowhere here. It says be alert and cautious at all times. Uh, that the enemy of yours, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, fiercely hungry, seeing, seeking, it says here, but in the King James says, seeing uh, whom he may devour. So what's he looking for? Ignorance. Hey, ma'am, sir, uh, can I devour you? No, no weapon formed against this shall prosper in Jesus' mighty name. Any tongue rise by me, God shall condemn. Oh, he's not ignorant. <laughs> Psalms 91, I plead the blood of Jesus. <laughs> no ignorance here. We're going to have to pass this one. Hey, pass that one by. Scratch them off your list. Come on. That's what it says. Let, let's go. Let's look at a few more scriptures. You still with me? Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. We got some, some with me people today. I turned the page. Let me get back to the page. Uh, thank you, Lord Jesus. In ignorance, I said. Was that number one? Yeah. In ignorance. Go to Ephesians 4. This is another good one. Ephesians 4. Starting in verse 24. I like praying in the Holy Ghost. That feels good. Ephesians 4, 24. <coughs> and put on the new self, the regenerated and renewed nature. All right. The regenerated and renewed senses. The generated and renewed emotions. Uh, the generated and renewed feelings. Uh, you should, in Christ Jesus, you should not feel the way you used to feel. I, I talked to all, all walks of life. And, and recently someone said, I just, I have so much uh, professing Christians, so much hate, hate, rage, and anger in me. I said, well, you got devils in you. Why would you say that? I'm, I'm born again. Well, those aren't godly attributes. Come on, can you say amen? Are you just going to reduce it to, uh, well, it's just, it's not a demon preacher. He's just dealing with some things. No, hate, anger, and rage are tools of Satan. They come from Satan. These are activities of the demonic. This is not normal for a believer. Believers should be, uh, we should be growing the fruit of the Spirit, not the fruit of Satan. Well, here we see once again, <coughs> you should put on the new. <coughs> uh, being continually renewed in the spirit of your mind, having uh, flesh untarnished. Uh, uh, th this was up one, actually, 23. Mental and spiritual attitude. And put on the new self, the regenerated and renewed nature, created in God's image, godlike. Everybody say godlike. God in the righteousness and holiness of the truth, living in a way that expresses to God your gratitude for salvation. Therefore, rejecting all falsehood. Whether lying, defrauding, telling half-truths, spreading rumors, and any such of these, speak truth each one with his neighbor, for we are all part of, uh, of one another, and we are all parts of the body of Christ. Be angry and sin not. I, I was dealing with a brother the other day. He said, I got so angry, but I didn't cuss. It's being angry and sin not. It's cussing sin. Oh, we got to go back there. You hook up with God, you get a new vocabulary. Come on, can you say amen? Be angry and sin not. Uh, be, uh, at, uh, sin not at immortality, at injustice, at ungodly behavior. Yet do not sin. Do not let your anger cause you to shame, or, nor allow it to last until the sun goes down. And do not give the devil any, this is where I wanted to get, 
Do not give the devil any opportunity to lead you into sin by holding a grudge, nurturing anger, harboring resentment, or cultivating bitterness. Don't let the devil. Do not let him. Well, how do I not let him? Well, I, I run away from, I run against, I work against these ungodly uh, uh, attributes or, or fruit of Satan. Can someone say amen? So number one, ignorance. Number two, uh, the, the ways Satan uh, enters or the... Uh, Four ways of demonic entry. Two, through involvement of witchcraft. Now, I'll dive into this a little bit more on Sunday, but through the involvement of witchcraft. Uh, once again, witchcraft deals with mind, feelings, emotion. It, it's, a, it's an involvement with evil. Uh, once again, it's to mentally manipulate a person. Uh, the, the very core of witchcraft is me to mentally manipulate you. Uh, me to steer you and dry, uh, drive you mentally. Uh, I, I'll manipulate your being. I'll find out things about you, uh, likes, dislikes. See, this is in the demon world where, where familiar spirits come to play. And, and familiar spirits and little notebooks that Satan keeps little tallies uh, on your life, about your life, that when you fall into a place or get into an ungodly place, he can begin to remind you and begin to manipulate you and begin to tell you why you can't have a spouse. This is why you can't have a spouse. He'll say, uh, you've been married and you're no good and uh, you, you've been engaged and you broke it off or your spouse left you and now you're used. Gar See, those aren't voices or words of the Almighty. That's Satan trying to, to manipulate you by way of witchcraft. Come on, are you still here? Can you say amen? Uh, so you can't involve yourself. Also, we can say this. And I, Once again, I'll get into this. We'll exhaust it. You speaking ungodly words is a form of witchcraft. Ooh. You speaking ungodly words is a form of witchcraft. Uh, remember this. Uh, uh, we've taken on a new vocabulary. We speak on behalf of God. I only say what God tells me to say, and He's the one that does the work. We understand that we become faith beings or a person of faith. In the, word, uh, faith, in the word of faith is to convey or to repeat what God's already said or, or to cast or broadcast God's seeds or the vocabulary of God the Almighty and, and we live in a seed and harvest world. So if you're moving about and moving people and moving yourself in a certain direction and you change your vocabulary uh, to Satan or on behalf of Satan, you now are operating in the occult or, or in darkness by using Satan's words to move people around and move you to and fro. Can someone say amen? amen. That's why the Bible is so clear on your words. Watch your words. Watch what you say. The importance of your words. Uh, a lot of people think it's hogwash. Well, go follow my life. I'm living exactly uh, where I prophesied or where I spoke. I spoke into existence the promises of God. And here I am today. Are you still with me? Uh, so we see... Uh, through through invol uh, involvement of witchcraft, uh, we can also say uh, in mental manipulation or to mentally manipulate, it, which is a controlling spirit uh, to trick or seduce. And, and then B, as a believer, uh, that was uh, 2A, and then uh, 2B here. As, as a believer, uh, we are forbidden to be involved with any ungodly actions or activity, such as tarot cards, palm reading, fortune telling, symbols, uh, psychics, etc. If you want to know something for your life, you can't go to Satan because he's just going to prophesy and try to get you in line with what he's speaking about your future. And he's not fortune telling you anything. Uh, all right. The other, the, this other familiar spirit, when you go like a, a psychic and, and they begin to be led by a spirit and tell you about your past, uh, you know your past, so why are you so amazed that a demon knows your past? You've been married twice. Oh, they knew. Or you pull up in a nice car and they peek out the window. Or you're carrying a little Louis Vuitton purse and they just make assessments. Oh, you've done well for yourself. Oh. <laughs> but if you want to know the future, only one knows the future. 
If you want help or hope, only one carries that kind of information, and his name is God, and he is the creator of all living matter. If you want to know what you did in your past, just go dig up all your old friends from the past, sit in a circle and say, hey, tell me about all my sin. You don't even need to pay a... But it's demonic. It's demonic. Come on, are you still with me? Let me get through these. I got about 10 more minutes with you. Uh, you and I'll get to this on Wednesday, but it, it, for another purpose, or if you're going to study this, remember this, that when revival came in Acts 19 to Ephesus, the first thing they did was begin to burn all their ungodly material. The first, when revival hit, the first thing they did, brought their tarot cards, they brought their trickery, they brought their sorcery, they brought their little ungodly notepad, whatever it was they had that was tied to Satan. They put it on the altar and they burned it and said, no more, I've been touched by God. Come on, are you still here? Say amen. Uh, number two, uh, through Satan's entry point, Satan uh, enters through the eyes. Uh, sin always begins at the look or, or from a look. Go with me into Psalms. That's why we're living in an age of sight or an age that's so beautiful to the eye. Everything online, everything on TV is mystical and it's wonderful. Understand Satan himself, Lucifer, was full of lights and full of beauty. Come on now. He was the most... Uh, the top angel, and he possessed the beauty of God, and he was uh, set in close proximity to God, and he was able to appeal to all senses on behalf of God. So Satan still possesses the ability and the knowledge to know who he was in God. He just conveys it now on a different screen or, at, or, or with mediums. Come on, are you here? Say amen. And that's why Hollywood now is conveying so much evil, but it's so, it, it's so, it, it grabs a hold of your eyes. Like you see a person on their phone, and, and like let, let's say Dylan's on his phone, and, and he's, and, and I don't, I'm not picking on him, or I don't know, but I'm just using them as a person, mostly young people. And we're, I'm right here, and he's locked in. His eyes are now engaged. And I say, Dylan, and he'll just be like, say, hey, son. Hey, what, 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 what? Because you've, you've locked into the lights and the, and, and the beauty and the imagery. Come on, are you still here? Satan doesn't appear to you once again. A dark and dreary and, and you know, uh, uh, I'm boring and I'm no good and, I, and I'm, I'm here to kill you. No, no. He appears as an angel of light. Is somebody still here? Can you say amen? Go into uh, Psalms. Thank you, Lord, for it. Thank you, Lord. Psalms in uh, 101. We'll start Psalms 101. One oh one three, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. Mm, rewind, restart, ready. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave unto me. Well, let's, let's look into that scripture. Whatever you set your eyes to has a right to cleave unto you. Uh, why do you think we have an entire generation that is rebellious? Because they fasten their eyes on rebellious videos. And it, it, it fastens itself to them. It'll click. Come on, are you here? Can you say amen? All right, let, let's go to Psalms 119. Maybe this one will be a little easier for you. Psalms 119.37. Psalms 119.37. says, Turn away my eyes from beholding vanity, and quicken thou me in your way. Uh, in the ESV or an Amplified, it, it amplifies it a little bit. And it says, uh, uh, Turn my eyes, the, the intent here, is turn my eyes away from the fleshly thing, the prideful thing, the ungodly thing. 
I don't want to be separated uh, from my God. Are you still here? Can you say amen? Uh, understand this. Write this down. The eyes are the gateway to your soul, your mind, will, and emotions. You have to put a, gu a guard upon your eyes. Uh, the other day we were at a little place and I had uh, Maddie, I was with Dylan, Tori, my wife, and Justin, and, and my little granddaughter Maddie, and, and the ears are also the gateway to your soul. Those are the two gates to your, your soul, your eyes and your ears. And there was a couple, and they were in a little corner, and they were fighting, and you could just see it was just dark, like evil all around it. And, and they began to say curse words, and the, the, the first thing I did is, is guard her eyes and her ears. Because if they begin to focus on it, it'll cleave or take root into their soul. Yeah, uh, parents, let me tell you this. Uh, don't be uh, so willing to allow your children. Uh, I, I still, my children are grown adults. And if I hear them watching anything ungodly on TV, or if I hear any uh, uh, curse words, I'll tell them, this is wrong, you know better, I'm removing myself. And let them understand that, that you're opening your eyes, your ears, and you're being desensitized. But as little children, now you've got to understand this, when you let your kids focus on something long enough, they'll form an image, come on now, and they'll play it over and over and over into their mind before it cleaves up attaches itself, fastens itself to their soul, and then they're driven towards that specific thing. It's called soul tied. Everybody say soul tied. You tie yourself uh, by images, by thoughts, by, by uh, 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 sensible desires. I, I desire that, I desire that, I desire, till it cleaves and ties you to it. And then you need someone like me to break you free from it. Come on now, say amen. Preaching pretty good. Even though I'm a little teachy, it's still good preaching. Amen. Uh, so the eyes are, are the gateway to your soul, uh, uh, your mind, will, and your emotions. Guard your eyes. And don't let, if you know a certain song or a certain movie takes you backwards, scratch it from your favorite list. If you, if you deal with depression, don't meditate on depression songs. Just feeding the fire. If you deal with a broken heart, like if your heart's broken and you're dealing with a broken heart, don't go watch Sleepless in Seattle a hundred times. <laughs> or whatever the other cry girly movies are. Don't call your girlfriend. Like I see on you know, TV, and they make a little fun and a little thing. Oh, you know, bring a box of tissues and a bottle of wine, and we'll sit and sob on the couch and, you know, drown ourselves in our tears. And this is fun for people? You've you got to turn. You've got to leave. Come on. If you like where you're at, go ahead and stay there. But if you're fed up for where you're at, uh, you've got to stop feeding the desires of where you're at. Oh, come on now, say it. Uh, the Bible says, when I was a child, I thought and acted like a child. But when I became an, an, an adult, I put childish ways behind me. There's a lot of childish adult, childish Christian. Uh, adult in age, childish in acting, and yet Christians. That's like a schizophrenic person. <laughs> but there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. And, and, and once again, it, it deals with your emotions and your feeling. That's the realm where Satan deals with the most. Your emotions and your feeling. Your emotions and your feeling. Your emotion. You can take an, an ungodly emotion and an ungodly feeling, and you can develop a, 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 like a blanket, a, like to a baby they get a blankie. Come on, parents, you know what I'm talking about? It's like a little comforting thing, but as a, 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 an adult, a Christian adult, you can take something evil and develop a comfort and have to have it and being soul tied. And then you can't get free from it unless you come across a severe uh, believer, man or woman believer, 
that knows how to break the power of the devil off you. And then your eyes are opened and you're sitting there thinking, wow, I've, I've allowed that heavy blanket of perversion. I've allowed that heavy blanket of divorce. I've allowed that heavy blanket of desperation. I've allowed that heavy blanket, uh, whatever that heavy blanket is, uh, I, I've gone every night and placed it upon my own self and allow it to constrict and rob life from me. But when you break the power of Satan, your eyes are open. When you drive this demon back, they can see and they say, oh my God, that's why it's the greatest thing to come to the altar and and you pray and you break the power of the devil off somebody or the anointing rests on them and they go from darkness to light or or they go from hopeless to to hopeful or or helpless to helped and immediately they begin to cry and their eyes just look full of life and, and they look like they're transformed and there's hope restored again. There's nothing like it in the entire world. Come on now, say amen. Fleshly lust, number three. Uh, fleshly lust. Oh, i got to hurry. Fleshly lust, uh, number three. Uh, the Bible says that we fight against, uh, and we got to fight against these fleshly lust. Uh, the, you know, anything that's prideful, anything uh, that, that's fleshly or a fleshly desire uh, that we th- developed in sin. Uh, anything that's a f- fleshly desire, an appetite that you've uh, designed in sin or that has developed in sin, you've got to fight this thing off. Uh, James 4, 7 says, Submit yourself unto God, resist the devil, and he shall flee from you. Submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he shall flee from you. Now, when you're changing, I'll end here, Billy, help me. When you're changing appetites, uh, and you're changing food, uh, like I talked to a a, a friend of mine at the gym, and he recently went through a heart issue. He had to have uh, three stents, stents put in. And then I, I see him at the gym. He was like, he was still kind of stocky, but he's a little bloated. And now he's at the gym and he's almost 50 and he looks like he's 17, just ripped out. And, and I said, uh, What happened? He said, Man, after I got that scare and I, I went and watched this movie and I went 100% plant based diet. And I was like, Wow, proof's in the pudding. You're looking pretty good. I mean, he wasn't big, but he's ripped. But in between that, that, that transformation, there's always a season, a battle that takes place. And it's the same way uh, when, when you're leaving the sinful nature, yes, it's going to hurt. Yes, it's going to be a work. No, it's not going to be like, poof, I've just made a decision, leave me alone, Satan. No, no, he goes to fight and, and to war to keep you where he's had you for all of those years. Come on, say amen. Uh, but if you'll just stay the course, you'll get to the place where you starve that out. Like I used to, uh, I, some of you are going to be like, what? I, I used to, could not stand filet mignon steaks. Like too lean, no bone, no fat. Right? Just like clean little red piece of steak. But when my doctor says, if you keep eating the other ones, you're, you shall surely die. <laughs> And if you want steak, this is the only one you can eat. I'd begin to develop a new taste for the almighty filet mignon. (laughs) But it took some time. Because you come on, you got to shut one thing off before you can open the other source. Can you say amen to that? So these are all things that Satan and and seduction uh, that, that, that come into play. Uh, emotionally, uh, mentally, through your eyes, through your ears, physically. And, and I, I know the drive of the soul. The, the soul, an untamed soul, is the most crazy, absurd thing on the planet. It'll cry out for the most wicked stuff. You, you know why? Uh, my wife said the other day when she was preaching, that the new thing is people will have sex with anything. Don't even have to be a human being anymore. It doesn't have to be live anymore. That's how wicked a soul is, unharnessed by the Spirit. Uh, the soul is the part of you uh, that you're having a, a, a wonderful, happy, good marriage, and then all of a sudden your soul says, I want a different woman. It's crazy. 
Are you living a good life and you're worshiping God and, and you're serving God and, and then all of a sudden you wake up and say, I don't believe any of that's true anymore. I don't want to go to church. I don't want God anymore. It's all a, a manipulated soul. Seducing spirits. Yeah, you have to keep your soul disciplined. You, you have to live. Uh, we can sum it up by saying this. The, the way to heaven is narrow, the Bible says. So you have to live a narrow life, yeah, physically, spiritually, mentally. The Bible deals with it. First, second, third John. Uh, I would that you would prosper, be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Spirit, soul, and body. You got to live a narrow life. You, you can't live a broad life and want narrow results. If you want narrow results, or a harvest that's come from a narrow lifestyle, you got to learn how to live narrow. You, you got to remove the God hindrances from your life. You just got to pluck them out. First, you got to define them. Uh, and, and once you define them, you bring them out of darkness into light. And, and then you pluck them out. You're causing me pain. I'm plucking you out. You're not in darkness anymore. I, I brought you into light. You're harming me. I'm plucking you out. Uh, you're robbing my joy. I'm plucking you out. Uh, you're robbing my life. I'm plucking you out. You're robbing my livelihood. I'm plucking you out. And then you fight for the things of God. I fight, I fight, I fight every day for the things of God. I don't want to get far away from God. I want to get closer and closer and closer. Lord, do whatever you have to do, but let me never get far away from you. I said last week, if we have to play your, pray your limbs fall off to get you into heaven, so be it. Because you don't want to miss heaven. Can you say amen? amen? Bow your head and close your eyes for a moment. If you're here today and you say, I'm not heaven bound. I don't know uh, Jesus Christ personally. If I were to die today, preacher, I have no earthly idea where I would go. Well, let me tell you this. You would go one of two places. You'd either go to heaven immediately. The Bible says the moment your eyes close or your body stops living in this earth, the next person you see will be either God or Satan, heaven or hell rather. The moment you leave this earth, you go to heaven or you go to hell. It's your choice. The Bible says if you declare or confess with your heart the Lord Jesus... If you believe that God sent Jesus to die on the cross, he was dead, buried, and he rose again, and you profess that with your mouth, the Bible said, you shall be saved. So if you're here today, you say, preacher, I don't know, I don't know, but I want to know, help me. If that's you, when I count to three, one, get ready. When I count to three, two, you raise your hand, and I'll pray with you, and you'll be heaven bound from this point forward. Three, raise your hand. If that's you, say, I want Jesus. Let me see your hand. I say, Thank you, one, two, thank you, three. Is there anybody else? For thank you. Is there anybody else? I want Jesus. From this point forward, I'm not ashamed. I want Jesus. I'm done living this way. I want Jesus. If that's you, just raise your hand and leave it up to just a moment. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're going to pray this prayer. You put your hands down. We're going to pray this prayer. You can look at me for a second. And it's not the prayer as much as it's the heart. And God saw your heart, knew what it took to raise your hand, uh, knew the, the, the pain uh, that you're trying to leave, and, and, and know the hopelessness that you're trying to leave. And, and God knew the severity of your heart at that time when you raised it to heaven. God saw your heart. But now we're just going to uh, just publicly confess, Jesus Christ is my Lord now. I believe in Him now. I'm going to serve Him from this point forward. Can everybody stand to their feet? We're going to pray this prayer, all of us together. But those who raised your hand, you just pray this prayer. and You just you kind, of, kind of got to just receive it with every morsel of your being. Something great's taking place. God's doing something so great in you. He brought you to this place today because he loves you. And he has something great for your life. Amen. Uh, let's pray, church. We're going to pray with these four believers, or uh, new believers that have just... Raise their hand for Jesus. You ready? And please, those four, pray this out loud. Say, Heavenly Father, I believe that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for me. I believe he was dead and buried, but he rose again. I receive you now, Jesus. Come into my heart. Save me 
be the Lord of my life. I turn my back on sin. I turn my back on Satan. And from this point forward, I will follow you. In Jesus' name, amen.